Hello guys, this is Siddharthan. If you are new to this channel, this channel is all about artificial intelligence and machine learning stuff. So in this channel, I will be posting three videos per week. So two videos will be on the basics of machine learning. So basic concepts and topics and one video will be a detailed use case or project in machine learning. Okay, so the basic videos will be uh, posted on Monday evening and Wednesday evening and the project video will be posted on Friday evening. Okay, so in this video, we are going to discuss about one of the interesting use cases in machine learning. So it is rock versus mine prediction using Sona data. Okay, so we will do all the programming in Python and you don't need to install any Python software. So we will be using Google Collaboratory. So Google Collaboratory is a cloud based system where you can write your Python script. So you just need Google Chrome for it. So I'll show you how you can access it later in this video. First of all, let's try to understand more about this uh, use case. Consider there is a submarine. Okay, so there is a war going on between two countries. So uh, submarine of a country is going in, uh, you know, underwater to another country and uh, the enemy country have planted some mines in the ocean. Okay, so mines are nothing but the explosives that explodes when some object comes in contact with it, right? So there can also be rocks in the ocean. So the submarine needs to predict whether it is crossing a mine or a rock. Okay. So our job is to make a system that can predict whether the object beneath the submarine is a mine or a rock. Okay. So how this is done is the submarine sends a sonar signal. Okay. Sorry, a sonar uses a sonar that sends sound signals and receives it back. So this signal is then processed to detect whether the object is a mine or it's just a rock in the ocean. Okay. So let's try to understand how we are going to do this. First of all, let's see the workflow for this project. First of all, we need to uh, collect the sonar data. Okay, so how this data is collected. So what happens is in the laboratory setup, an experiment can be done where the sonar is used to send and receive signals bounced back from a metal cylinder and some rocks. Okay, so because the mines will be made of metals, right? So we collect this data which is nothing but the sonar data which is which we obtained from a rock and a metal cylinder okay and we use this sonar data and we feed this sonar data to our machine learning model and then our machine learning model can predict whether the object is made of metal or it is just a rock so this is the principle we are going to use in our uh, prediction okay so first we need to collect the data okay so once we have the data we will process the data so we cannot use the data directly so we need to pre-process the data so there are a various steps in that which we will do in this video so we need to analyze the data so we need to understand more about it so once we process the data we will split it into training and test data okay so why we are splitting the training and test data because so let's say there are 100 examples so 100 instance of data we will train our machine learning model with 90 uh, you know instances and we will test our uh, machine learning model. So we evaluate our model with another 10 data points. Okay, so there are totally 10 uh, 100 data points. We may use 90 data points for training and we can use another 10 or 20 data for testing our model. Okay, so once we split our data into training and test data, we feed it to our machine learning model. So in this video, in this use case, we are going to use a logistic regression model because logistic regression works really well for binary classification problem. So this problem is a binary classification problem because we are going to predict whether the object is a rock or a mine. Okay, so we'll be using a logistic regression model and this is a supervised learning algorithm. Okay, so once we uh, train our machine learning model with the training data, we will get a trained logistic regression model. So this model has learned from the data on how a metal cylinder will be and how a rock will be. So this model can recognize it based on the sonar data. Now, when we give a new data, it can predict whether the object is just a rock or it is a mine. So this is the workflow we'll be uh, following in Python to make this, uh, you know, script for this use case. Okay. So now let's go into the coding part. So before that, I'll show you the data we have. Okay. So this is the data sonar data dot CSV. So it is in a CSV file. So you can find this data in Kaggle and other data sites like uh, UCA machine learning repositories and other sites. So I will be giving the link for this file in the description of this video. Let's try to look at this video. Uh, sorry, in this uh, data set. So as you can see here, there are a lot of numbers. It's, so there are a lot of columns. So let's see there are how many instances. So there will be almost 200 examples. So as you can see here, there are 208 examples. That means 208 data points 
So on the, on the in the last column, we have something that tells you know R and M. Okay, so R represents the values for rock and M represents the values of mines. Okay, so as I told you earlier, this values are obtained in a laboratory setup where the sonar data is collected for a metal cylinder and for a rock. So as you can see here, there are several features. So features represents the columns of this data set. So we feed this data set to our machine learning model and it can learn from this data on how a rock can be and or how a mine can be with the help of this sonar data. Okay, so let's see how we can make this Python script. So I'll close this. So as I told earlier, we will be doing our programming in Google Collaboratory. So search for Google Collab. So this is the website for it. So collab.research.google.com. Okay, so you just need to choose new notebook here. So this Google Collaboratory will be linked to your Google Drive account. So if you have any collaboratory files, so it will show up here. So I'm going to use a new notebook. So these are nothing but uh, Python notebooks as you may have uh, noticed this in Jupyter notebooks. So it has, it has an extension of IPYNB. So it is just like uh, Jupyter notebooks. So as you can see here, it is a .pynb file which is known as Python notebooks. So I'll change this file name as rock versus mine prediction. Okay, now you can see this connect button here. So go ahead and connect this. So what happens is our runtime gets connected to a Google server. So it is completely free. Google Collaboratory is completely free. So you'll, you will be allocated a system of uh, a very good storage size and very good RAM. So as you can see here, so we have 12 GB of RAM and uh, 107 GB of storage, which is really good. So it is better than most of our systems. So we will be doing all our programming in Google Collaboratory. Okay. Okay. So as you can see here, this is called as a cell. So we will write our Python scripts in this cells. So as you can see here, you can give this code option to create another cell. So if you give this text, you can write some comments or a description about your code. Okay. So I will tell about the features of this Google Collab once you know we use it for different purposes. So, so as you can see here, this is where we will upload our data files. So I have already shown the sonar data file for you. So how you can upload is, so you can click this folder option here. So there, either you can choose this, so it is to upload a particular file, or you can right click here and click upload. So I'll upload the sonar data. Okay. So it is a very small data file. So you can find it in Kaggle or UCA machine learning repository. Okay. So as I told here, our agenda here is to predict whether the object is a mine or a rock using the sonar data. So first of all, we need to import the libraries we want. So import the dependencies. So we will require several functions and libraries for this. I'll write a comment here. So as I told you, told you earlier, so this is for uh, writing description and comment about your code. So I'll just type importing the dependencies. Okay. So you can press enter or you can press, press shift plus enter to complete it and go to the next cell. Okay. So once you write a Python script, you can click here to run your code or you can press uh, shift plus enter to run this code and go to the next cell. Okay. So first we need to import some libraries. So we will require numpy for this. So I'll import numpy as mp. So import numpy as mp and we also need pandas. So import pandas. 
SPD. Okay, so NumPy is basically for uh, you know for arrays and pandas is for uh, several data uh, processing steps. So we will see about that later. Now we need uh, train test split. Okay, so we have seen earlier that we need to split our data into training data and test data. So we will we will require a function for that. So from sklearn dot model selection. input train test split okay so this function is used to split our data into training and the test data so we don't need to do it manually okay so then we need our logistic regression model so sklearn is a very good uh, python library for machine learning algorithms and other functions so we will encounter it in various different uh, places here there is a small mistake here sklearn dot model selection so import train test split now we need to import our logistic regression model so sklearn dot linear model so this is how you can import logistic regression so input logistic regression and we need the function accuracy score so from sklearn dot metrics input accuracy score so this is used to find the accuracy of our model okay so these are the libraries and functions we need so first we import numpy so numpy is used for creating numpy arrays so and pandas so pandas is used for uh, loading our data uh, loading our data and numbers into a uh, good table so uh, these tables are called as data frames so we will discuss about this uh, that in a later point so then we have a uh, train test uh, split so we import it from the library sklearn then we have imported the logistic regression model. Then we have imported the function accuracy score. So you can press shift plus enter to run this cell and go to the next cell. Okay. So if you have any printing output, it will show here. Okay. Now let's do the data collection and processing steps. So I'll just put a text here. Data collection and data processing. Okay, so we already uploaded the data. There are several methods to, you know, upload data in Google Collaboratory. We can uh, upload the data straight to Collaboratory using some APIs. So we can do it with Kaggle APIs. So we will discuss about it in some other project video. So as you can see here, we have the Sonar data file here. So now we need to import this Sonar data into a Pandas data frame. Okay. So I'll make a comment. So in Python, if you write something uh, prefixed by hash you can comment it so loading the data set to a pandas data frame so i'll create a variable called as sonar data i will be loading this uh, data to a data frame and i have named this data frame as sonar data so as you can see here, I have imported pandas as PD. So this is just like an abbreviation. So I'll be using this abbreviation. So PD dot read CSV. So as you uh, as I have uh, told you earlier, we have the data file as a CSV file. So we need to use the function read CSV. Okay. So now we need to mention the name of the file, name and the location of the file. So you can do it by you can go here and click here. So there you will see this option called as copy path. So this will copy the path and name of the file. So we have to enclose it in quotes and put it in this brackets. Then, so as you can see here, we don't have a header file for this. So as you can see here, we don't have any header file. So header files means a name for the columns, right? So there is no header file. So we need to mention in our uh, pandas data frame that there is no header. So header is equal to none. So I'll press shift plus enter. And this loads our data to a pandas data frame. Okay. Now let's uh, have a small look at our data set. So I'll just type 
shown our data dot yet so what this function yet does is it displays the first five uh, rows of our data set okay so i'll run this so as you can see here we have uh, first five rows of our data set and there are several columns so as you can see here there are 59 columns but actually it's 60 column because in python the indexing starts from zero so totally we have uh, 61 columns and 59 columns we have 59 features and we have in the last last column we have uh, r or m so i have shown you right it's either rock or mine so it is that categorical value so this is the use of this get function it tries to you know it prints the first five rows of our data set now what we will do is let's try to see how many rows and columns are there so number of rows and columns So if you if you are not uh, you know uh, if you don't understand any functions you can just search in Google about let's see so you want to know what this read CSV function does so you just can go to the pandas uh, documentation so pandas dot read CSV so this is the pandas official documentation page so you can go here so you will uh, so you can see the use of this uh, particular function here so as you can see here, it read a comma separated value csv file into a data frame it supports optional iterating or breaking the file into chunks so you can do this for any functions so in order to uh, learn what this function actually does so these are the parameters so we don't need all these parameters so in our case we have used only two parameters which are the path of the file and we have included that there is no header okay so if you have any doubt about any function you can search it in google like this okay so now we need to find the number of rows and colors so we can use it you can we can find it by using the function called as shape so sonar data dot shape so this gives us how many uh, rows and columns are there so totally we have 208 columns and uh, sorry 208 rows and 61 columns the last 61st column tells us whether it is a rock or a mine and there are totally 208 rows so 208 rows means there are 208 instances or examples of data okay so and 61 represents the feature so let's say for this zeroth zeroth instance so it is a value for one rock and there are 60 features for this one rock and it is labeled as R. Okay. So, like this, there are 208 instances. Now, what we will do is let's try to get some um, statistical definitions for this data. So, sonar data dot describe. So, this gives the mean standard deviation and other parameters for our data. Sorry. I just made a small mistake here. So now data dot describe. So as you can see here, it gives the count. So count represents the number of uh, instances we have for the zeroth column. So like this, we have uh, all the way up to 59th column. So it gives us the count. So the number of uh, values we have, the mean of this column, standard deviation for this column, minimum value, 25th percentile, 58th percentile, 75th percentile, and what is the maximum value? So percentile means like 25% uh, percentage of the values are less than this 0.0133 for first columns, and 50 percentile means 50% percentage of the values are less than 0 0.022 so that is what percentile is so for some use cases uh, it is really important for us to find this mean and standard deviation it, it it gives us a better understanding of the data so hence you can use this describe function to get some statistical measures so i'll just make a comment here so describe gives statistical measures of the data okay now let's try to find how many examples are there for rock and how many examples are there for mines okay so we can do that by sonar data dot value counts so this value counts function uh, gives us how many rock and how many mine examples are there okay so I have to include one more thing. 
So we just need to put a 60 here. The 60 is nothing but the column index. So as you can see here, the rock and mines are specified in the 60th column. So I'm specifying 60 in this value count. So value count uh, function. Okay. So why I am using Sona data? Because I have loaded this data frame into a variable called as Sona data. So that's why I'm using this Sona data and uh, including the function with this. Okay. So now let's see how many rock and mine examples are there. So as you can see here, there are totally 111 examples are there for mine and 97 examples are there for rock. So it is almost equal. So it is not a problem. So if we have uh, data for one type of instance more, let's say for your example, if we have uh, 1000 examples for mine and we have only 500 examples for rock, then our prediction won't be very much good. Okay. So if we have almost equal number of examples for both the two categories, so our prediction will be really good and we will get a, a very good accuracy score and our model performs well okay so it is almost uh, equal here so actually uh, speaking so totally there are almost 298 uh, instances but this is not sufficient for a machine learning model so we may require even thousands and uh, several thousands of examples for making a better model but we are just looking at some examples so we are okay with this so you just need to note one thing more the data more accurate your model is okay so i'll just uh, represent here that m represents mine and r represents rock okay now let's try to group this data based on mine and rock so sona data dot group by 60 dot mean so now I'll explain you what the, what is the use of this. So as you can see here, so we got the mean value for all the columns for mine. For a mine, we have uh, the mean value for zeroth column as 0 0.034, but for rock, it is 0 0.022. As you can see here, there is quite a difference between these two. So uh, this difference is really important for us because using this only, we are going to predict whether the object is either a mine or a rock. Okay, so we just found the mean for each of the 59 columns, sorry, 60 columns. Okay, so the mean value for a mine is these values and for a rock is these values and there is a quite a difference between them. Okay, so this is really important for us. Now let's try to um, separate the data and the labels. Okay, so here the data, I mean the, these numerical values. So these are the features and the last column is the label so we need to separate this so we are going to do that let's see so i'll just make a comment here separating data and label so this is a supervised learning problem where we train our machine learning model with data and labels so in unsupervised learning we don't use labels so here we have labels which are nothing but rock and mine Okay, so let's put all the data in the variable x. So sonar, sonar data. So I'm going to drop the last column, 60th column. So data dot drop columns is equal to 60. So I'm dropping 60th column. And if I'm dropping a column, I need to specify the axis as one. So if I'm dropping a row, I will be specifying axis as zero. Okay. And Let's put the label in the variable y. So sonar data. So we need to use a square bracket here 60. Okay, so what I'm basically doing here is I'm storing all the values in x except the last column. So I'm dropping the 60th column and I'm storing uh, storing the 60th column in y. Okay. Let's try to print and see this. So print x print y so as you can see here now there are only 59 columns so actually it's 60 column and it starts with zero and the last label is in the variable called as y so we have successfully splitted the data and the labels okay now what we will do is we will try to uh, split this data into training and test data okay so let's include a text here
ట్రైనింగ్ అండ్ టెస్ట్ డేటా సో యాజ్ వి హ్యావ్ ఆల్రెడీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ ద ఫంక్షన్ ట్రైన్ టెస్ట్ స్ప్లిట్ సో విల్ బి యూసింగ్ దిస్ ఫంక్షన్ టు స్ప్లిట్ ఆన్ డేటా ఓకే సో వీ నీడ్ టు గివ్ సమ్ వేరియబుల్ నేమ్స్ హియర్ ఎక్స్ట్రైన్ so you can give any names here so for convenient purpose i'm giving this name so x train x test y train and y test so this order should be followed so first we will take the training data and the test data then we will uh, take the labels of training data and labels of test data z equal to train test split and we have to include this x and y here so we are going to split this x and y into training and test data so x comma y so there are several parameters here so i'll explain you about that so x comma y test size which have the test size as 0.1 and stratify stratify is equal to y and random state is equal to let's say okay so now let's try to understand about these parameters so we are going to split our data into x train and x test y train and y test so x train is nothing but the training data for this and uh, x test is the testing data and y train is the label of those training data and y test is the label of the test data okay so now we are using the function train test split then we in the parameters we have included x and y so we are going to split this x and y into training and test data so here we have the parameter test size so test size like if we give 0.1 means we need 10 percentage of the data to be test data okay say for example we add uh, almost 200 examples so what happens is like 10 percentage of 200 is uh, 20 so we will have 20 test data so that is the use of this test size you can use 0.1 or 0.2 so based on uh, the number of data you have okay so here we will take just 10 percentage of uh, data string data stratify is equal to y so stratify why we are using the stratify is yes we need to split the data based on rock and mine say for example we need to have equal almost equal number of rocks in test data, training data and equal number of mines in the training data okay so hence we include this stratify so our data will be splitted based on the number of uh, these two rock and mine okay and then we have random state so random state is to split the data in a particular order say for example if you do the same code and in the code you include one your data will be splitted uh, you know in the same way as my data is splitted so if uh, i put two here so my data will be splitted in a specific way and if you include a two in your code it will also be splitted in the same way it is basically to reproduce the code as it is so i'll use one okay so now we can split our data okay now let's try to see how many uh, training data and text test data are there so print x dot shape so it is the original data without splitting into train and test and then we have x train dot shape and x test dot shape so i'll run this so as you can see here in the original uh, x we have 208 examples and uh, in the training data we have 187 instance and in the test data we have 21 instance okay so we have uh, 21 test data and 187 training data now we need to train our machine learning model with this x train with this training data okay now let's see how we can train our model so model training so we will be using a logistic regression model so i'll create a variable called as model so as you can see here we have already imported the logistic regression function here so model is equal to logistic regression so this will load this uh, logistic regression function into the variable model now we are going to train the model so training the logistic regression model 
with training data. Okay, so for that we use the function model dot fit. Here we need to include the training data and training label. Okay, which are X train and Y train. Okay, so let's see what is this X train and Y train ones so that you can understand it. So I'm printing X train. And also y train so this is the training data so x train is the training data and y train is the training label so as you can see here we have the data here so totally there are 187 examples and 60 columns and this is the label so as you can see here it is kind of random because we have used the training testing split okay so now we are going to feed this data training data on this training data's label to our logistic regression model. So that's why I've included model dot fit x train and y train. So when I run this, our model will be trained. So if you are having a lot of data and if you are using a complex model like a neural network, it will take a lot of time. So here we are seeing a simple example and simple data. So it doesn't take much time. Okay, so our model will be trained. So these are some parameters of our model. Now let's see how our model is predicting. So now let's check the accuracy score of our model. So now we are going to evaluate our model. So model evaluation. So we have imported the function accuracy score for it. So we will use this function to find the accuracy of our model. Accuracy on training data so first let's find the accuracy on the training data so what's happening here is so we will use this same data the data which the machine learning model has learned so we will try to use this model to predict these examples okay so then we will use the test data okay so what is the significance here is the model has already seen what is this test data, sorry, the training data, but it it haven't seen what is this test data, okay? It is just like preparing for an exam. Let's say you are uh, preparing uh, all the example problems in a mathematics book for your exam. So those example problems are nothing but the training data. So in the exam, a new problem will be asked and you need to solve that, but, uh, but you have never seen that question, right? So that is nothing but the test data. So we need to test our model for accuracy on training data and the accuracy on test data. So it is always, it, in most of the cases, the accuracy on training data will be more because the model has already seen uh, this training data and uh, most of the times the accuracy on test data will be less, okay? So if the accuracy of uh, your model is somewhere greater than 70%, it is, it, it is actually good. So, and it also depends on the amount of data you, you use. So as I have told earlier, so if you use, uh, you know, many data points and if you use a better model, you will get a good accuracy score, okay? So if we use, uh, you know, quite less number of data as we have in this case, where we have only 200 data points, our accuracy can be low, okay? So, but the idea of this, you know, uh, video is for you to understand how you can implement these steps. So the accuracy is not that much important, but we have to note here is, so any accuracy greater than 70 percentage is good. Okay, so now let's try to predict the training data. Let's train prediction. Is equal to model dot predict. Let's train. training data accuracy so we will store this accuracy value in this variable training data accuracy so training data accuracy is equal to accuracy score so this is the extreme prediction is the prediction our model makes okay based on uh, its learning so we need to include extreme prediction and all the correct values it is white ring 
So okay, so what happens here is we are going to compare the we are going to get the accuracy score. So extreme prediction is the prediction of our model, and y train is the real answer of our uh, answer of uh, this instances. So as you know here, so we have uh, we have this test data right. So x test and y test is the label of this test data. So now what happens is we are going to compare the prediction of our model and the original label of these data. Okay. By that we will get the accuracy score. So let's try to get the accuracy score for the training data. So I'll print the accuracy score. So accuracy on training data. So I'll copy this. So this will have the accuracy score here. Training data accuracy. So as you can see here, we got almost 83.4 percentage of accuracy. So it is actually kind of good for these many data. So now let's try to find the accuracy score of test data. Okay. So it's, it will be the same part except for some changes. We just need to include the test data here. So accuracy on test data. So X test prediction. Test data accuracy. So the model has never seen this data. Okay, so model dot predict x test. Okay, so y test. So now we are. Uh, using our model to predict the test data and this uh, mo uh, prediction of this model will be compared to the original labels which is y test okay test data accuracy now we need to print this accuracy score so accuracy on test data test data accuracy so we got a 76 percentage as accuracy score which is really good so which means out of 100 times it can predict 75 times the correct object whether it is a rock or mine okay so we got accuracy score as 83 percentage for training data and 80 76 percentage for test data so our model is performing fine okay so now let's what we are going to do is so we have a trained uh, logistic regression model and now we are going to make a predictive system that can predict whether the object is either rock or it is mine using that sonar data okay so now let's see how we can make this predictive system so making a predictive system so we need to give the input data so i'm making a variable called as input data okay so in this uh, parenthesis we need to include the sonar data so we have uh, seen this sonar data right so we will be uh, taking some examples for rock and mine and we will check whether our model is predicting uh, the rock and mine correctly okay so this is the use of this code snippet so once i complete the script i'll uh, copy some values and put it and let's see whether it's predicting correctly so input data so once we get the input data we, we have to convert it to a numpy array because the processing on, on numpy array is faster and it's more uh, easy so it's basically changing the data type to a numpy array so a list to a numpy array so changing the input data so i'll just make a comment here so changing the input data to a numpy array so we will use the function numpy dot as array for this function so input data as numpy array so this is the variable i am giving it so input data as numpy array is equal to np dot as array so if you remember we have imported the library numpy as np so i am using np instead of numpy okay so np dot as array input data so basically we are converting this list into a numpy array and let's let's take an example say for example 
and I'll open this from a notepad. Okay, so let's take some random example. Okay, let's take it. I think it is a rock. So as you can see here, this example is rock. So if we feed this data to our machine learning model, so it should predict that this is a, a rock. Okay, so I'll copy this. Okay. So I'll put this in this input data. So we have totally 60 features. So I have converted this input data. So this is basically a list. So we are converting it to a numpy array. Okay. Now we need to reshape the data. Okay. So because we are just predicting for uh, one instance. So for that purpose, we need to reshape this array. Otherwise, our model can be confused by the number of data points. So we need to reshape the numpy array as we are predicting for one instance. Okay. So input data reshape is equal to I'm copying this so input data as numpy array. So we need to reshape this reshape one comma minus one. So this one comma minus one represents there is one instance and we are going to predict uh, the label for this one instance. So that is why we are reshaping this. So once we reshape it, we need to make the prediction. So I'll create a variable called as prediction and I'll store the prediction of our model. So model dot predict function is used to predict it. So we have stored our trained logistic regression model in the variable called as model. So as you can see here, so I'm calling that uh, model function. So model variable. So model dot predict this input data reshape. So this contains the features of our data. Okay. So this data is present in input data reshaped. Okay. So basically what happens is that this model dot predict returns either R or M as value. Okay. So it, uh, you know, tells us whether it is uh, either a rock or a mine. Okay. Now let's try to print this prediction. So let's try and run this. So it should predict that this object represents a rock because we have copied the data for a rock, right? So I'll run this and yeah, it predicted correctly that the object represents rock from this example. Okay. And uh, let's include a if condition here here that if we get R as our prediction, it should say that the object is a rock and if we get M, the object is a mine. Okay. So as you can see here, this R is included in a list. So if this prediction is equal to our prediction zero is equal to r. So I'm using this zero because this zero represents the first element of uh, the list. Here the list is uh, this prediction. Okay. So the first element is r and we need to represent it with this index as zero. So that's why I'm using uh, zero as the index here. So if it is not uh, in a list, I won't uh, include this as zero. Okay. So if the first element of this list is equal to R, we need to print that the object is a rock. Okay. Otherwise, so else. We need to print it as a mine. So when it is M, we need to print it as the object as a mine. Okay. Let's try to run this. So as you can see here, so we get the first element in the list as R. So it tells us the object is a rock and we know that we copied the data of a rock 
now let's try to uh, see whether our model is predicting the mine correctly so let's try to get some random value for mine and let's try to uh, let's let's find whether our model is predicting correctly i'll take this value so this is this value represents mine as you can see here there is an m so i'll copy this value let's see whether it's predicting correctly so if if our model is working correctly it should say that uh, it is m which means that the object is a rock so i'll just replace this okay now let's try to run this now it should say that say that the object is a mine so as you can see here it is predicting correctly that the object is a mine so this is how our predicting system works so i hope you have understood all the process we have done here so i'll just give you a short recap of how we are doing this so first we have imported the dependencies so numpy is used for uh, making arrays and pandas is used for making a data frames and uh, we are using the libraries sklearn for uh, using the function train test split so it is used to split our data into training and test data and in this case we are using a logistic regression model so we are uh, importing that logistic regression function from sklearn.linear model and we are in, uh, importing the accuracy score to find the accuracy score of our model from sklearn.matrix then data collection processing so we have imported the sonar.csv file into our google collab environment okay so now we are feeding it to a pandas data frame by pd.read csv function so and i am storing that data frame in a variable called as sonar data so here we need to give the path of the file and since we have no header in this file so we have to mention that there is uh, header is none and uh, by the function yet we are just printing the first five columns of our pandas data frame and we find that the last column is a categorical column which says whether it is a rock or a mine so r represents rock and m represents mine then we are determining the number of uh, rows and columns we have so we have 208 columns which represents 208 data points so and uh, 61 features okay so 60 features and one label which is rock or mine then we have used the function uh, sonar data dot describe which gives us the count the number of uh, values we have mean and standard deviation and other statistical values then we are counting how many mine examples are there and how many rock examples are there and we find out that it is almost equal and then and then we are grouping the data based on mine and uh, rock and we find their mean values and uh, we get a quite difference in their mean values okay so as you can see here there is a difference in mean value of rock and mine for each of the column okay so now we are uh, splitting the data into all the features and all and uh, the labels so we are feeding all the features to the variable x and all the labels to the variable y okay now we are splitting our uh, x and y our data into training and test data okay so the training data is used to train our model and our model is evaluated with the help of test data right and then we are loading our logistic regression model in the variable model and uh, by the function model.fit our model is trained it is just like a graph okay so in the x-axis there will be this features and the y-axis there will be labels okay and uh, the graph will be plotted so this is how model is trained so once we have uh, trained our model using the function model.fit we are finding the accuracy score so first we find the accuracy score of uh, training data which is around 85 percent 84 percentage and then we find the accuracy uh, score for the test data which is around 76 percentage then we are making a predictive system where if we give the features if we give the data it can predict whether the object is a rock or a mine okay so this is how uh, these are these are all the procedures we have used in this use case so i hope you are clear with all these so i will be giving uh, the uh, link for the sonar data so the data file and also this collab file in the link of the dis link in the description of this video so you can uh, download it from here so uh, do try google collab so try to do all these uh, things we have done here okay so try to write all this python script by your own and try to understand it so if you have any doubt if you have, if you run into any problems uh, mention in the comment i will try to solve your problem okay so that's it from my side i hope you have understood the topic we are covered in this video so i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching